All right. Let's get started. So webhooks take your home automation possibilities to another level, as it enables your network connected devices to become triggers. Why is this important? How can you use it? Let's talk about it. First, what is a webhook? Uh, you can think of webhooks as an event-driven one-way request. For those of you who know about APIs, it's kind of like that, but lightweight, and it isn't bi-directional. Let me give you an example. So at Epcot Center in Disney World, uh, there was an attraction called Agent P's World Showcase Adventure. When you get into the park, you would talk to one of the agents, and they would get you started on the adventure by giving you a link and a URL to enter into your phone. So to help Agent P stop due for smirch, the website would give you puzzles, but to solve them, you would have to follow clues to real world locations in the park. At these locations were information to help you solve the puzzles. When you solve it, it would trigger an automation in the park somewhere. These automations were fun and sometimes very hilarious, dare I say magical. To other guests, it was just background noise or just Disney being Disney. But to you and whoever was in on your adventure, they knew and you knew that it had purpose. Now because of how low tech and one way the website was, I suspect that they were using webhooks to communicate from the website on our phones to the server controlling the animation automations. In the same way, webhooks can allow phones, websites, and other network devices to send one way communication to home assistants to trigger automations. Okay, so now that you have an idea about what a webhook is, uh, how do you use it? So I'll show you both on the automation page and in Node-RED in Home Assistant. On the automation page, you can choose webhook as the trigger. For the ID, I suggest using an ID that is easy to remember and reflects the purpose of what the automation is. For this, I'll call it turn on office light. Another thing to note is that the webhook IDs must be unique and you can't choose this ID for a different automation again. Lastly, you can set up the rest of the automation as normal. In this case, I'll just turn on the office light. And that's it for the home assistant side. Okay, so how do you test this? For that, we're gonna use Postman. This is a Chrome extension that you can use to test network requests. Since the webhook is a lightweight API, we simply need to call the endpoint and it should trigger the event. In Home Assistant, there are two additional things you should know about webhooks. First, don't give your webhook API or the webhook ID to anybody. This can pose a security risk for you and it can allow people access to your device if you're not careful. Lastly, the webhook APIs do not work using GET requests. You have to use POST and PUT or some of the other ones that they listed here in their documentation. Okay, so with that in mind, here's how we can call the endpoint. First, we'll make sure that we're using POST. And for the URL, it will take the following form. Okay, so look at the first part of this request. This is the address of your home assistant server. This is something that you should already know because you already have access to this because how else are you going to make changes? This middle part is where Home Assistant assigns all the webhooks. Any webhook that you make will be at this particular path. And the last part of this ID you created at the beginning when you set up the webhook. When I click send, you'll see that the lights activate. Something else to note is that you can send data to the webhook requests. This is kind of commonly known as like payloads. So if we head back into Home Assistant, we're gonna send a custom value to adjust the brightness of the light. But to do this, we're gonna need to go into the template mode. You can access the payload values via the trigger.json variable. Here, I'll look at the brightness key in the JSON. Now, if we go back to Postman, we can add a payload here and call it brightness, similar to the key that we have in the JSON. Now, if I run it, you'll see everything works. Now, for those of you who use Node-RED and for those of you unfamiliar with it, you can see how easy it is to set all of this up with Node-RED. FYI, this is my preferred way of setting up automations. First, we're gonna grab the webhook node and we'll give it a slightly different name just so we can make sure that this works. Let's call it Office Lights. First, we'll choose debug, so that way we can see the information that's being sent. Clicking deploy is how we save. Just as an aside, the debug node basically allows us to just see all of the requests that are coming through or just what's going on behind the scenes when events are fired. Super useful. So when I come back to Postman, I'll update the URL to Office Lights and click send. 
You can see here that the call came through and we can see the parameters that we can use in our automations. Next, we'll use the call service node, choose light. For service, we'll choose turn on. For device, we'll choose office light. And in this data section, we get to set up the dynamic part. Here we'll create a JSON object with brightness as the property. And this key here is listed in the properties down below, and it's the same as the YAML version that we've previously set up. And for the value, we'll set it to what we discovered here, message.payload.brightness. So after deploying, we can run Postman again, and we can see that everything works. Okay, so these examples are trivial, and you may be thinking, I'm not gonna use Postman to trigger my automations, so what's so great about webhooks? Postman was simply a way for us to test. You can replace Postman with, let's say, a website that you own, or an if this then that automation, or my personal favorite, your phone. Your phone is capable of sending webhook requests. On the iPhone, you can create automations that trigger webhooks, which now allows your phone to become a home assistant trigger. I'm sure Androids have this too, but I don't have one. So if any one of you have an Android, please post comments down below uh, the Android equivalent apps that can do what I'm about to explain. So in the previous video, I mentioned how useful webhooks can be, and I told you how I implemented my webhook automation. And now that you're more familiar with webhooks, this shouldn't look like magic what I'm about to explain. Now this is the automation, but I'm gonna simplify it a little bit further. This right side defines the autom what the automation does, so turning off the lights, setting alarms, and so on, and the left side determines how the right side gets triggered. For the sake of this demonstration, I'm gonna hide this in a black box and simply label it automation. All you need to know about this is that the automation will work the same no matter how it's triggered. Now let's focus here on the left side. You can see here that there are three connections to this automation, meaning that there are three ways to trigger it. When I first created the automation, I had triggered it using NFC. That's this node right here. Later, I started experimenting with dashboards and I created a new node that will activate when a helper button is pressed on my Home Assistant dashboard. That's this node here. This other connection is the webhook. If you see here, the ID that I'm using is iPhone charging. So you probably know what the endpoint should look like. So once the webhook triggers, it first goes to the switch node, which is similar to an if statement. Here I'm looking to see if the value passed in from the webhook is true or false, which determines how this automation plays out. If it's false, then it means that the phone charger has been disconnected. This time range node checks to see if the time is between 6 a.m. and 9 a.m. And if it's within range, it will enable a motion sensor switch. I have a separate automation that controls the lights in the master bedroom via motion sensor, which kicks in around the evening time when it's dark. So to avoid issues, I disable the switch at bedtime and enable it again when I wake up in the morning so that way the automation will work again in the, pr the following night. So this path here, is what happens when the phone is unplugged in the morning. This other path is when the value is true, meaning that the phone is plugged in. This next node checks to see if I'm home using a zone node. If this is true, then the last condition checks to see if the time is between 9 p.m. and 3 a.m. Now this ensures that no matter how many times I plug and unplug the phone during the day, it needs to be within that window which is the window that I most likely would be asleep or go to sleep. This automation works great 99% of the time. The only loophole I encounter is when my phone is low on energy at the end of the day and I simply want to plug it in at night, but I'm not ready to go to bed yet. But I have a simple workaround for this. Next, we're going to head to the phone. In the shortcuts app, we can create a personal shortcut for when we unplug the phone. For actions, we choose get contents of URL. We input the URL and set it to post. The request body is how we pass data. If you remember, we had the if statement that looked at is charging to determine what to do. Here is where we can set is charging to false. Lastly, we wanna set the ask before running to false and notify when run to false. Now let's make the automation for when we plug it in. We follow the same steps as before, but now to solve the loophole I described earlier, I'm gonna first use the get current focus and pair it with the if statement. 
The if statement only allows me to check to see if the focus had been set, which is technically good enough for me. Now inside the if block, we can add the get contents of URL and set it up the same way as we did before, except we're gonna set the request body is charging to true. And lastly, remember to turn off ask before running and notify when run. And that's it. Now, whenever I plug in the phone and the focus mode is enabled, it will call the webhook. However, since the hook uses both a zone and time conditions, the automation pretty much never fires unless all of those conditions are met. I'm sure this could be optimized further, but it works so well that I'm satisfied with how it is. Now you probably can see how useful this can become. Now, if you don't mind, post in the comments what you plan on using the webhooks for. I like hearing you guys' ideas as it gives me more ideas too. In a few days, I'm gonna post a video that gives you seven additional dope automations using both webhooks and your phone. So subscribe if you like this video and if that sounds interesting to you. Otherwise, if you're seeing this much later on, you'll see a link to that video somewhere in this video. And you're also welcome to subscribe and like this video too. Also, to learn more about webhooks and Home Assistant, look through their documentation and you can probably squeeze a little bit more utility out of this. Okay, bye.